before breaking it down, loading it onto trucks, and moving it to a new location to be set up again. So well aware that the Nighthawk was overhead, Donnie powered his radar on for the second time, and once again, found nothing on the scope. Now at this point, procedure dictates that he should have had his team power it down, break it down, and relocate. Which, from what I understand, they were able to do in less than 90 minutes at that point, which is pretty impressive. But instead, Donnie took a minute. He recognized that the weather was bad, that there were no electronic warfare aircraft in the sky, and realized there were probably no wild weasels with radar hunting missiles either. So he broke the rules and decided to power on his radar one more time. Now, by all accounts, Colonel Zelko was a very experienced combat pilot, and he certainly can't be blamed for what happened next. In what could be considered either incredibly good or bad luck, depending on which side of the conflict you were on, Zelko opened the bomb bay doors of his Nighthawk to deploy his munitions exactly as Donnie powered on his radar for the third time. With the bomb bay doors open, the F-117 stealth profile was compromised just enough for Donnie to get a lock. He fired two missiles. Now, F-35 pilot and YouTuber Hazard Lee wrote an excellent analysis of this incident for Sandbox News for us a little while back, and I'm going to quote Colonel Zelko directly from that piece. They were moving at three times the speed of sound, so there wasn't much time to react. I felt the first one go right over me, so close that it rocked the aircraft. Then I opened my eyes and turned my head, and there was the other missile. The impact was violent. I was at negative 7 Gs. My body was being pulled out of the seat upward toward the canopy. As I strained to reach the ejection handles, one thought crossed my mind. This is really, really, really bad. Now, Colonel Zelko was fortunately rescued later that same day, but I tell this story for two reasons. The first is to tell you that these low-frequency, early-warning, counter-stealth radar arrays have been around the whole time. They are the reason why Zoltan Dani knew there was an F-117 approaching. But the second is that this story is often brought up when people are trying to discount stealth capabilities, or specifically American stealth platforms. The truth is, Zoltan Dani deserves this win. He deserves tons of credit for having the wherewithal and the combat presence to make these hard decisions. But it's really important to understand that the reason these SA-3s were able to find the Nighthawk in the sky were that its bomb bay doors were open and its stealth profile was compromised, especially considering Considering modern stealth fighters are designed to deploy their munitions in less than a second to prevent this from happening again. But more important than that was a failure that took place before the mission even started, at the mission planning stage, because this F-117 never should have been flying along the exact same flight path as repeated previous Nighthawk missions. Because we now understand that stealth fighters are plainly visible on many low-frequency radar arrays, you'll probably now appreciate why mission planning is absolutely essential for stealth fighter operations. Fighter pilots put a great deal of time and energy into mission planning so that they can press their advantages and leverage their opponent's weaknesses. And a big part of that is knowing the right route to take in and out of the fight. Believe it or not, things are actually a bit easier for stealth bomber pilots, despite stealth bombers being significantly bigger. Aircraft like the B-2 Spirit or the forthcoming B-21 Raider don't have things like vertical tails and other surfaces that they would need for aerobatic fighter performance, and as a result, they don't produce the same resonance to low-frequency radar arrays that can produce an easily detectable return. A B-2 Spirit could fly over your nation and you might never know it was there. But if an F-35 is in the neighborhood, you know it's there. But like Zoltan Dani in Yugoslavia in 1999, you've got your work cut out for you if you want to actually target it and shoot it down. But even if you're flying the F-22 Raptor, which is widely considered to be the stealthiest fighter ever to take to the sky, you still can't just fly into contested airspace without a plan. Stealth is a toolbox full of handy capabilities, but it's not a blanket solution for all the problems that combat may present. 
But I've got one more saved round before we call it a day, because most of the concept art that we've seen for the Air Force's forthcoming NGAD fighter or the Navy's FAXX fighter program all show a sort of variation on the Delta wing design without vertical tail surfaces, and that may indicate that these aircraft will be very difficult to spot by even that early warning low frequency radar, and that would be a significant development. All of the world's stealth fighters, whether we're talking American, Russian, or Chinese, are detectable using these low frequency early warning radar arrays. So if America's next generation of stealth fighters prove very difficult to detect by even these low frequency radars, that would be a significant advantage and could result in America's stealth fighters actually being as sneaky as people think stealth fighters already are. And on that ends yet another edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure you swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.